at 2-0 on late play. Tied for first with USC. Terry Donahue, last week, became the Pac-10's all-time winningest coach. And his roads have been tough on the road. They've won seven straight over the past two years. The Wildcats of Arizona are 2-1. They're one game back of UCLA and USC. And they had a week off to get ready for this game as Dick Tomey, in his third year as coach of the Wildcats, lost to the Bruins here last year, 24-3. Brad Del Muso is going to be kicking off a junior out of San Diego. And back deep will be Michael Bates along with Errol Sapp. Now, we had heard that Michael Bates had had a virus when he woke up this morning. They were concerned about him, but he's back for the opening kickoff. The virus has disappeared by the time you get to the locker room. <laughs> UCLA ready to go, and we're underway. Fine drive. There'll be no return on this one. Well, he banged that one. Did he ever? And at the 20 yard line, the Wildcats will have it. There is Ron Veal, the starting quarterback. Veal as a starter is 10 4 and 2 in his two plus years for the Arizona Wildcats. Only throwing 39% completion, however. Looking now at his offensive backfield, Eldridge, Hampton in the backfield along with McGill. They're going to go from the eye from time to time today. A little change. And up front, Brandon and Parker, the leaders. They're the seniors on the right side of that offensive line. As you can see, they come out high, strong, right. This is a new wrinkle now for the Wildcats. Get it straight ahead to Eldridge, and Eldridge has a seven-yard gain. Going to bring up second and three. Mike Lodish, number 94, made the stop. Let's look defensively at the Bruins. Lodish leading that defensive forward troop very well. He's joined by Kelly and Bryson. The linebackers, Keaton Davis, Argo, and Pat Beach Shaw is out of the ball game. They had hoped he would be able to start. Turner, along with Darby, returning starters from a year ago in the secondary. That secondary is a little bit late. late. Lining up there, Gary. Old gun put it to be a split out to the near side of the field. In motion goes McGill. Pitts comes back to Eldridge. He's on the first down. To the 40 yard line. Stacy Argo up to make the stop for the Bruins. Let's look now what Arizona wants to do offensively. Well, Rip Shearer, the offensive coordinator, said the number one thing they have to do with their style of offense is be efficient on first down, stay out of the second and third long situations with their style attack. We're not a great passing team. Dick Tomey, in his third year, his club last year going 7-4, and four, winning their final three games of the year. Kip Lewis is split out now, the single wide out as McGill goes in motion. Eldridge again. 215-pounder, senior out of Tucson, brings it across the 45 to the 46. Argo and Turner combine on the stop, a gain of eight. Let's look at what the Bruins want to do defensively. Well, Bobby Fields, the defensive coordinator, says, hey, number one thing we've got to do is take away their inside run. They better get started because they're running inside. Gary Donahue, the winningest coach of all time in Pac-10 play with 72 wins. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you see them lining up in an eye formation, that deep tailback. That's the first time in a couple of years they've really gotten going to this style of attack. First time for sure this year. This time the short man, McGill. McGill's got the first down. So this new wrinkle is working for Dick Tomey. Eric Turner eventually made the stop. First down at the UCLA 45. That extra week of preparation really helps a football team prepare. As you watch now, the big fullback number 35 leads through, gets a good block in there, and there goes Reggie McGill for a nice little game. The extra week allows you to put in some things that you wouldn't have time to do if you just had your normal week of preparation. Big advantage for Arizona. Kyle Jan, Kip Lewis, wide out, split left and right. This time, I strong right on a first down. Yellow motion. On the option is Veal. He keeps it. And he is very close to another first down. Dion Lambert, the cornerback, up to make the stop. Gary, I think Arizona is going to like this uh, addition to their offense because it's going to allow them to determine which running back they want to have the ball in their hands. As you take a look at this coming from the end zone, you'll focus your attention to the right. The fullback goes inside. Now the defenders are blocked right there. The ball's good. I think pitch. Good job of turning back up inside. See that little fake with the left hand? At many times, the defender will overreact and go take that uh, trail back. That was the first down to the 35-yard line. Lewis is split to the near side. The Wildcats, initial series of the game that started from their own 20. Fake pitch. Veal, they didn't fool anybody. Gets rid of it, though. Complete to Lewis. And Lewis has another first down to the 20-yard line. Matt Darby over, but a very good job by Veal. 
Flotis was not fooled on this play, Dick, but he no. still had poise to throw the ball. What he's doing with the action of the quarterback here is facing, faking the toss away. Now watch the quarterback as he reverse pivots, and he's going to toss like it's a float play to the left. Now this pulls the defense that way. Now he comes up, no blocker, just a scramble situation, bootleg situation, and hits the little quick pass out there for the nice game. Gain of 16 just inside the 20-yard line. This is Griffin, the tight end, aligning himself to the near side. Eldridge to the 10 to the score and a take it in. Touchdown, Arizona. Arizona coming in, second in the conference and rushing it. Boy, did they rush the ball well on this particular series. Everything they did was brand new in their attack. UCLA will make adjustments in between series now. Standardize what they're going to do, make the adjustments, and probably slow them down this next series. 19-yard touchdown run by Eldridge. He had 45 yards on four carries on that drive. Doug Bath, outstanding place kicker, comes in. John East will hold. Kenneth McPeters, the snapper. The ball is down. Bath kick is up, and it's a 7 0 game. So the opening series, a very successful one, covering 80 yards. And this 19-yard run, giving the Wildcats the early advantage. Eldridge of the touchdown. They were telling us, Nick, he's really got some confidence now after the severe ankle injury. No question. That was his first touchdown of the year. Focus your attention on the big left guard, 67. 300-pounder there. He gets just enough brush block at the point of attack as he pulled across there to open up that big crease. Look for UCLA to tighten up that inside defense. They've been defense the option all week in preparation. This is a different style of attack. You see the numbers on the drive. Well, they have fired the first volley. Yes, they have. In an impressive way, I might say. Well, last year in here, they moved the ball very well in the first drive, and they dropped the touchdown pass. That was Kip Lewis. Kip Lewis dropped the post pattern. Nice will kick off instead of Bath. Ready to go. 7 0 in the Wildcats. Ryan Brown is back deep, and he's going to bring this one up. Up to the 22 yard line, and UCLA will start there. Brett Johnson, the red shirt freshman quarterback. And he has created some excitement at Westwood. Great touch and has uncanny ability and poise for as young as he is. Estwick's his fullback. Wills is second consecutive start. Far more than Arbuckle starting for the first time at tight end. Up front, veteran line. Four starters back from a year ago. Cornish, the All-American candidate at center. From the 22, the Bruins with their first snap of the game. Sean Wills. Wills goes for three to the 25. Anthony Smith, number 94, was over there first to make the stop. Gary. There he is. Is he excited, Eldridge? Oh. Hey, the game didn't over, kids. We celebrate. Well, he's from Tucson. Pueblo yeah. High School. He's got to be excited playing before not only the college crowd, but his old high school buddies here. Well, he also had that terrible ankle injury. You know, and he's just really 100% now. Second down. Let's make it eight yards to go. Wills again. No place to go. Back there's Anthony Smith, and Smith's got him. Smith, the transfer from the University of Alabama, as he helped the Wildcat defense. Take a look at the linebackers as they flow on this play. It's a deep toss. There they are, Singleton, Case, Salem, and Alexander. And then Hammer, Smith, Holt, Lewis, and Geyer, the secondary. So the loss now will bring up third down and 11 yards to go. Smith has been really an impact player for Arizona. Oh, I know it. And he's a big guy that can run. All these guys can for Arizona. They think the front seven's the fastest they'll face this year. That's what Terry Donahue told us. Back to throw. Brett Johnson. Over the middle. Nobody there. So all of a sudden, UCLA's got to kick the football. Barry Donahue's team has won 10 of their last 11 games on the road. Seven straight. They've been tough, but right now find themselves down 7 to nothing. Arizona has been good over the last few years at blocking punts. You really have to do a good job in disciplining your protection. 34 blocks to be exact. Kurt Maggio will go back and punt. 
Terrell Lewis is back deep for the Wildcats. Good rush put on. Got very close to it. Lewis is going to let it hit, and that's going to cost him. That's a mistake. See, now he lost at least 15, 16 yards there. He should have fielded that ball. So the line of scrimmage for Arizona will be the 18. That will go as a 51-yard punt. And Ron Field, his troops leading 7 to nothing, will come out offensively. From the 18-yard line now, Arizona their second snap offensively, I should say second series, and Eldridge out to the 25. They might end up liking this attack. Oh, forget the wishbone. Eldridge really has to like it. It gives him a chance to find the open seeds, the little holes. Well, he gets the ball right away, where on the option, he goes down the line of scrimmage, and the quarterback flips, flips it to him late, and it doesn't allow him to go ahead and tuck the ball away and become a, you know, an innate ball carrier. He has to stay on track and take what they give him. Guardi has 52 yards. He had 107 yards last year against UCLA. Second down. Three yards to go. This time they go to the short man, the fullback Mario Hampton. He's got the first down. See, the other thing that happens when you mix up your offense like this is you still force the defense to be concerned about when you're going to run the option. And that ties you down. I'm responsible for this guy, I'm responsible for this guy, and I'm responsible for this guy. And it, it gives you a problem. I would think also, Dick, that it really takes some pressure off of Ron Field. Oh, yeah. A few weeks ago, they had a 65-snap day of offense, and he was responsible for making a decision on 52 of Too much pressure on him. Yep. First down at the 29. Kip Lewis is split out at the top of the field. High wing left this time. The wing man is McGill, and he's got the ball. Breaks one tackle. Check that. That is not Gill. It's Errol Sapp. A freshman out of Carson, California, who hasn't carried that much. An exciting player. He was the Los Angeles City Player of the Year last season. Taking a look at the down four at UCLA and the problems that they have, you can see the little hole that closes up right there. Sap keeps on going, and then the pursuit will come inside out and make the play. But uh, they have some problems. But you can rest assured that Bobby Fields and the defensive staff will solve those problems. Second down, five. Sam with great confidence for a true freshman on the 34-yard line. Neil to Eldridge. Eldridge hammers it to the 40. Good second effort, and that's a first down. Greg Davis, who leads a Pac-10 in tackles. The inside linebacker heading helmet to helmet. But Eldridge picking up yet another first down. Greg Davis, you said, led the Pac-10. Last week, he had 19 tackles versus Arizona State. And he is a Tucson native. He's one of those guys that got away. He's got to be a little bit sore yet for making 19 hits last week. That's a bunch. He's averaging over 13 a game. At 102 of them last year. First down now for the 40. 7 to nothing. The Wildcats with the lead. That's him to the fullback. Having trouble staying on his feet, but still getting pretty good yardage. Eric, right now, doing very well on first down. And doing well inside. Offensively, their goal was to be efficient on first down. They're doing that. Defensively, their goal was to take away the inside run. They're not doing that right now. So that gives the edge to Arizona. Boy, Dick, you really set pretty when you have a second and five. She was set pretty right there, too. <laughs> From the 46-yard line, I'm surprised by you. Kip Lewis put out, also Olga Fedidemi at the top. High, strong left. Neal on the option, wants to pitch. He does to Eldridge. Eldridge got some running room. He's to the 35. He could go. Eldridge is to the 10. Eldridge with his second touchdown of the day. He's also over 100 yards already in this game. That was a 54-yard run. What a start for Arizona. Fast point after it's a 14 to nothing. So Arizona, realizing this is a golden opportunity to move to the next level, have really made a bold statement early in this football game. 14 to nothing they lead. 
7.44 still left in the first quarter. Overlooking the city of Tucson and the University of Arizona campus, A Mountain has been one of Arizona's strongest athletic traditions. For over 75 years, freshmen have ascended the mountain to paint the large A made of stone and concrete. David Eldridge is off to some start. Seven carries, 112 yards, and two touchdowns. And I can't emphasize enough as the miscalculated on reconstructing ankle surgery in the spring to be running like this today. A great salute to our medical profession. Nick, we have something interesting right here. We could have an onside kick. Now, you say, why would you onside lead 14 to nothing? That's Dick Tony. I mean, you do it when you lease it. Expected and told me he can do those things. Now, see, he lines up tight. He got one against Stanford like that. They like when they were lined up tight for kickoff. Stanford was spread out, so they kept it. That's what you said, Neil. He's a gambler. He didn't do it. So Nice looks like it's a conventional kickoff. Got to be alert to that every time because they may do it. Boy, he got into this one. Didn't he? Nice. Both teams doing a good job kicking off, and now from the 20, UCLA who took three snaps and punted the last time away at the ball. The concern, Terry Donahue, and rightfully so, his team trailing down 14 to nothing. And when you're on the road, boy, you don't want to get started like this. No, and you know, the thing is that Arizona has only scored 14 points in the first quarter of the entire year so far. Now they have 14. This is ballgame. But Terry is not a panic guy. He has a lot of poise, and therefore the squad will, will demonstrate that in their performance as the game goes on. He will not panic. 14th year as head coach. The Bruins still looking for some success offensively. Second time to get the football. Trailing 14 to nothing. Red Johnson play action thing. This is what he's good at, a scrambling, but he doesn't get away that time. Chris Singleton was over there. They feel Chris Singleton is the best linebacker in the country. Well, they say he's the best football player on defense in the Pac-10. Now, you know what? He's going to have to prove that as the year goes on, but he is an outstanding young man. He's an identical twin. His brother, Kevin, diagnosed last July having leukemia and uh, great support. They're so identical, the coaches can't hardly tell them apart. They used to wear their, their numbers on a pin around their neck, right? Good. Second down. Johnson on target. Beautifully thrown ball and a catch by Scott Miller. Miller, his high school teammate, former junior college standout. Well, it's tough when you're friends. We asked Terry Donahue what it's like coaching against his friend, Dick Tony. Well, you know, I'm getting more used to it with Dick in the league. And, of course, Rich Brooks has been in the league a long time. And they were both on our first staff at UCLA. And Dick and I go back all the way to the University of Kansas with Pepper Rogers back in 1967. So, uh... You know, I'm getting used to it. I don't particularly enjoy that. I've said that publicly a lot of times. I'm, I'd rather compete against people I don't know very well. Or more than I'm not to be with. Uh, just because um, somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose, and, and it's hard when that happens uh, when you have friendship involved. Well, I'll tell you, his friend Dick Tomey certainly is not letting his friendship get in the way of anything. They're leading 14 to nothing. However, UCLA starting to put it together. That pass a moment ago, a 17-yard completion, and now a two-yard gain, second and eight. That was Wills on the carry and Donnie Sadel on the stop. Scott Miller goes in motion. And they're changing the play as now rolling to the far side is Brett Johnson. That's Miller. He wants to hit, overthrows everybody incomplete. They're going up the third down. Darrell Lewis defending on the play. Here's the goal now of the Bruins. They want to really mix it up. Well, they want to control the ball with a mixed attack. Now, meaning that they wanted to throw the high percentage pass on the rundowns, complete them, and keep it moving that way. And uh, right now, they're not doing a real good job of that, though they did get their good slant pattern. The guy standing by Terry Donahue is Rick Neuheisel, a former Bruin quarterback, played at the USFL, and now has helped with the offense. Both of these coaches have hired former players to coach for them on their staff. They're very loyal people. Third and eight. Trouble being chased by Anthony Smith. 
And this is exactly what concerned UCLA's the quickness up front defensively by Arizona. They, they want to stay out of the third and long situations. And Anthony Smith, I walked by him the other day. I said, Anthony, are you ready for a real battle? And he said, I'm going to keep my pads low and get after him. Well, he's got that. So again, UCLA has to punt the football. Maggio standing at the 19-yard line. Maggio has really been an improved punter. He had a bad spring and came back this fall. He's been outstanding. In fact, they even spent some time trying to recruit another punter in between spring and fall. And this guy came back and just did a great job. And he did a fine job on this one. Back is Lewis at the 15. So at the 26, Arizona will have it for the third time. Thus far, the Wildcats had things going their way. And that's a 52-yard punt and an 11-yard return. Arizona Stadium for the Great Southwest. 14 to nothing. Arizona leads UCLA. I'm Gary Bender, Dick Vermeil, and Cheryl Miller. And Dick, it's amazing. Arizona has been so efficient, they haven't even had a third down today. And I think that all goes back to having the week off. Not only were they able to prepare with the new offensive approach, but they allowed them to freshen up their players by taking a few days off. Eldridge is off to a big day thus far. Neal on the option for the Wildcats, and he's not going to go anywhere this time. Good reaction that time. It's a Tumi Tuala. So out of Tuala. California, one of those outstanding names that we work with as we get ready for this broadcast. You'll see him at the right corner of your screen, number 66. He steps down, he makes a nice job coming off the box, works him inside out, and makes that play. That's how you have to play that ball. When the quarterback comes down that close to the line of scrimmage, you get penetration, you'll make the play. Good job there. It's a two-pay transfer from Citrus Junior College. Kyle Jan and Lewis put out a loss of a yard. Second and 11. On the option this way, Beal. And slips. Good job by uh, Rosine. Yeah, Keaton was over there, the junior out of Los Angeles. Now, what's happening, Dick? Again, they're making Beal keep the football. And that's been the problem all year long. That's right. And uh, I think they ought to get back to those other running plays. <laughs> those didn't work as well, did they? They gained, what, one yard and two plays. So the line of scrimmage now, the 28. Third down and nine. This is where Arizona has not been good. They've only converted 24% of their third down situations. Prior to today, this is their first third down. I wouldn't be spicy and run. Gill in motion and be able to throw. A lot of time. Over there is Lewis. Can't get to it. Kip Lewis, the intended receiver, and Michael Williams defending on the play. Field throwing a, only 39%. Last year, he completed 38. The thing is about him on the practice field, I noticed it, Gary, he throws a lot of balls high over the top of people. I, I, many times that's because you just lean it back and not really following through with your throw, but he throws a lot of balls over the top of people. Strong arm. Coach Tony says he's one of the best deep passers he's ever seen. Didn't work there, though. And for the first time, Arizona's got a pop. Beast is back to pump the football. Mike Farr to receive it. Nice Get it. Oh, nice pop. Beautiful. Farr calling for the fair catch. Beautiful find And he'll have it inside the 25. So Nice and Pfaff really giving Arizona an outstanding kicking game. And the two of them work together. Nice holds for Pfaff. They spend a lot of time together. In fact, the night before the game, they come out and visualize how they're going to do everything. <laughs> I can believe it. Kickers all have little routines of their own. When they work, it helps their confidence. If they go through a routine and it doesn't work, they have to find a new routine. <laughs> Nice's daddy, by the way, is an official in the NBA. That's right. This Brad Johnson, you know, just watching him for the first time, he reminds me of John Chara. Yeah. You would know. You've been around him. Yes, sir. He reminds me of He's built like him. He has that look in his eye, that little spark about how he carries himself around the field. So UCLA looking for some success. They have first down possibilities now for the 24. Johnson, a little pressure, gets it off to Corwin Anthony, the tight end. He has it a gain of eight. Darren Case is over there, number 50, to make the stop. Well, let's get the other perspective. Let's go this time to Dick Tomey and ask him what it's like to coach against his friend, Terry Donahue. Well, you know, I, I used to say I like him, but I, I really, I think the pragmatics of coaching Terry Donahue and I, and, and, you know, I don't enjoy it as much as I might have the first year because I think it was it was kind of a novelty coaching against Rich and Terry. And, and uh, 
but I, I think I think of it more just as UCLA against Arizona. I really don't think about Terry being there because I really care about Terry. I like him a lot. We've been close friends for years and years and years. And if you really got into how much the game means to us and how much it is to them, I think that would really bother you. But, so I really don't think about that. That was Reggie Gaddis who reached up and batted down that pass. Uh, Brett Johnson is going to bring up third down, still two yards to go. I, I wonder if the fact that the Arizona hasn't been successful in beating UCLA and turned down it yet that influences his feelings. <laughs> they want to control the running game. They're controlling everything pretty well. The only real success has been that one 17-yard completion by UCLA. Paul Richardson's in now with Barr. And a big hit on Brown. Brown. Brown was hit by Gaddis. Gaddis, a backup defensive end from Pomona, California. Gaddis is the right left center of your screen. The defensive line when the ball will be tossed deep. Now, watch the defense is better the ball carry. You'll see him ricochet off the block. We're right in the middle of the screen. He flashes up there, and Gaddis is better against the run than his core at that position, Reggie Johnson. That's why they had him in on that third and two, three situation. What a luxury they have. Macho to pump the ball to this. 209 left in the first quarter. 14 to nothing Arizona. Lewis. Let's just look at it again, but this one will go out of bounds. 22 yard line. The Wildcats have stymied the Bruins offensively. They have the football once again, and Ron Field will come in. A 14 to nothing lead for this Arizona team. A team who has really had two of the best back to back wins in the history of the school. With back to back, they were able to beat Oklahoma and Washington. Then they got ambushed in Oregon, had a week off, and it really seemingly used it very constructively. And Oregon is a good football team. Don't just assume that Oregon's a pushover. They're a good football team. And every time you mention Oregon in the Pac-10, every coach that you visit with say they're one of the best coach teams in the Pac-10. Rich Brooks doing a good job up there. And friends of Tommy and Donnie. Yeah. Coach for 24 years. Neil Oh, nice play. This time of the Frank 20. Davis. That is Davis again. Davis has really become an outstanding player for this team. The only returning starting linebacker from last season. He wants to be an electrical engineer, and he let that guy up. Did he, did he ever? His birthday here is October 16th. From Canyon Del Oro High School here in Tucson. With a running back as well as a linebacker here. So if he intercepts one, he can run. Hard in yardage that time of three. Second down. Eldridge again. And Eldridge is time for maybe two more. You see, like getting a little stiffer now. John Pryor, 64 out of Santa Barbara, a senior, was there to make the tackle. Pryor and Brian Kelly share that nose tackle spot. Ted, the UCLA coaches have already made some adjustments, tightening up inside there. The defense coordinated by Bobby Fields, but he has a fine staff, and Larry Courier coaches the secondary. Larry Kerr, the inside linebackers. Mike Walton, the defensive line coach. Uh, they're doing a fine job of making some adjustments. A third down now, third and five. And a sap in motion. Neal on the option. And just to Eldridge. He's got a corner, and he's got the first down. Boy, is he a load when he gets those shoulders turned up the field. First down to the 41. The whole key to that play was not so much the option. It was the block by the large wide receiver, Kyle Jan, number 81. He gets the block. As we take this, watch the quarterback as he comes down the line of the screen. Now look forward in front of the right-hand corner of the screen. You'll see a block right there. We didn't get to see it. It didn't show up, sorry. But anyway, a wide receiver got a knockdown block that allowed him to turn that corner. Now, 132 yards for Hillary. First down, 15-yard gain. Be on the throw. Oh, got Fidetomy, the intended receiver, but double coverage. Just nothing there. Carl Gray and Eric Turner defending on the play. Here's the block we were talking about a minute ago. You'll see it right there, right in the center of the screen. Down those people go. When he, you get him out there at that much room, he, you can't stop. He's going to make the first down. Is a 215-pounder. Don't forget that. So now it'll bring up second down. And again, Field trying to keep him on his passing, but really hasn't been close. <laughs> I watched him on the practice field. They, they've got another young quarterback we might see today. They, they can throw the ball a little better. Receivers wide left, wide right. Field to throw again. Protection breaking down. He's going to take off to the 
picked it. And I think he's got the first down. Stacy Elliott caught up with him. And Beal, when you get him open in open field, he loves to take off. Gary, if you, if you were a 39% passer, as young Veal is a 39% passer, when you got back there, you might wish the defense took the coverage away. One less completion and start running. Now, here he goes. This guy can run. This is what his real strength is. Veal is, thanks defense, you let me make first down. I might have thrown it incomplete. I guess so. Line of scrimmage now. That was a 10-yard pickup at the 48. Here it goes with motion. He'll reach again. 40 yard line. He has a nine yard gain. That's the play they scored on earlier. And we have come to the end of the first quarter. And it's been all Wildcats. Arizona on top of UCLA. 14 to nothing. We've played 15 minutes here at Arizona Stadium, and the Wildcats have really liked what they've done thus far. They lead 14 to nothing as we begin quarter number two. Second and two for the 40 of UCLA. The new offense, the new look is helping. Neal. Get it out to that time, Reggie McGill, and... Very close to the first down. That's Craig Davis on the stop once again. That's the other game on ABC, Michigan and Michigan State. It is a first down. UCLA is going to have to get a little more play out of their nose guard position right now. They're, they're blocking him uh, and he's not getting off. That's creating those little gaps up inside, and that's why Craig Davis is slapping over there and making tackles. Paul Toffelmeyer, the brother of Joe. Outstanding player now the Seattle Seahawks now playing center. On a first down, over to the 35, a gain of two. It'll be second and eight. Mike Lodish, who they consider to be the strongest defensive lineman in the school's history, was over there. Here's Big Brian Kelly, number 65, the nose guard. Let's see what he does. And oh, Tallmeyer comes off. And we got two guys blocking him. No wonder he can't get in on the play. But he's holding his ground. He does a nice job. Boy, that is a thankless situation. Boy, it? it is tough to play the nose guard position. You almost have to hate your girlfriend to play. <laughs> Second down, eight yards to go. Leo giving off this time to Hampton, the fullback. And Hampton is about five yards short of the first down. It'll be third down coming up. Let's go down to Cheryl Miller now. Thank you, Gary. I'm sitting in the section known as the Not Holders. These are the kids from the eighth grade down who can buy, go to the YMCA and buy tickets for only for only a dollar. Now, is that a deal or what? Now, you guys, what do you think of the University of Arizona's football team? I tell you, Cheryl, you're going to bring those kids with you wherever we go. We've got some fans down there. Third and five now. Neil, we chased him. There's a flag on the play. Gary Turner made the stop. I think we have an offensive lineman downfield. I'm not sure. Taking a look at it right now, the fullback, Hampton, to the right center of your screen. So he's going to sit in there. He's going to sit there, sit, pause. Now watch him check down. See, now I'm checked down, turn back, look for the ball. I can't see any lineman there. Oh, I see what the... Yeah, blocking in front, number 74 down there. Number 74, Clint Parker. Down there too soon. You can't miss him. He's 6'6", 307 pounds. Yeah. If the ball's behind the line of scrimmage, you can block downfield. But if it's across the line of scrimmage, you can't. That's the first penalty of the game. But, you know, you see this amazing Arizona has gone through two games with one penalty in each game. That's the greatest. Here it is again. You'll see the big offensive lineman. He's so big he can't hide. At six foot six, three hundred and four pounds, Glenn Parker. <laughs> Glenn, you can't sneak around down there. They can see you. Hey, the scouts like this guy. Oh yeah, he's a prospect. You know what he told me the other day? He says, Coach, make sure you say hello to all my buddies at Golden West Junior College. Look at that. Look at that. Man, you look good in one of those. No, I wouldn't. Would you? Okay. So the penalty negates the gain and brings up a third down now, nine yards to go. Kip Lewis to the near side. McGill goes in motion. 
short of the first down, and Davis is there again. Field goal time. Well, Faf has the distance, but they also have another kicker, Nice, who they think could even kick it further. Nick Toby might go for it on fourth down. He's been doing that this year. He likes to go for fourth downs. They are 8 of 11 on fourth downs this year. That's an amazing stat. But when you have an option, I'll bet you can do more of that. Right, and normally when he goes for it on fourth down, he makes the plan on third down. I don't think he had time to do it that situation. And so Arizona's going to think about this one. Fourth down, still two, and Arizona uses their first time out. 12-12 left in the first half. The Wildcats by 14. Arizona on a fourth down and a long yard coming up. Going to go for it, and Dick, the strategy here. Well, I think Coach Tommy feels that he's not going to beat UCLA with 14 points. He's down here right now. He's going to eat up some clock, try to make the first down, and go on and get the score. If he makes the first down, they stop him later. He can kick a shorter field goal. That's got to be his thinking. Me, I'd kick it. Also, he has great confidence in his defense. Fourth down, a long one. Eldridge, and he's got it. Well, they ran at the right clock spot. They ran up behind the big 300 pound tackle, Glenn Parker. Taking a look at this, look at the top right hand side of your screen, the big offensive tackle and guard. They're coming off. There's a fullback kicking out. Big Nick Finneon Ganofo, number 61, at 310 pounds, pulling through the hole. How'd you like that? I said that. Boy, Finneon you're good at that. Ganofo. Huh? That an old gun fit into me. I've been practicing all week. <laughs> me too. I still don't get it right. First down to 26, and now they're 9 of 12 on fourth down this year. They have a motion. Oh, they have a little trouble with the pitch Ooh, there. Nice defense. They got it to Eldridge and Pat. Marcus Patton over to make the stop. Well, you're talking about old gun fidelity, and uh, I hope you people at home appreciate how long we spent on these kind of names right here. All the time, old gun fidelity. But say it. Old gun fidelity. Old gun fidelity. George Malapulu and Nick Vinian Ganopo. Got to have a broad back to put that on your jersey. I'd call him Vinny. <laughs> they call old gun fidelity double O. Second down now, nine. Speaking of old gun fidelity, he split out along with Kid Lewis. There's a quarterback draw. He's got a big play. He does. First down to the 11 yard line. Excellent call offensively. Very nice job by Rip Shear, the quarterback coach, the quarterback coordinator of the offense. Very good call. Got him coming up field. And that quarterback draw actually hits a little quicker than a normal draw. See it set back there? He plants, upfield he goes. You see the lineman to the left of the screen working up to wall off people. You see Parker, number 74, getting the block right there. Craig Davis getting blocked. Good job, good execution. So they're trying to keep this drive going after picking up a fourth and one. Now have a first down at the 11. Tap in motion. This is Bates, Michael Bates, the freshman out of Tucson. Got about a year. Second down, eight. Sap. Sap goes no place. Good play. Good play. It's there. Yes, sir. Good play. Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly. Brian Kelly. They lost a yard on the play. Lodish was also there, but it was Kelly who made the initial penetration. Brian Kelly, an all-state academic student coming out of high school. Bright young man playing nose guard. Referee is James Springer indicating holding against Arizona. There's Kelly. He led it three times in football, two letters in basketball. He's a track man, put the shot, all-around athlete and a fine student. You know what happened to him in the spring, though? He got a chicken box. I didn't know that, but that still existed. Holding. First half, 14 to nothing, Arizona. Well, the big thing here now is for Veal to not turn the ball over or take a sack. Don't have I me mean, throw it in the end zone or whatever, but don't take a sack and don't turn it over. Half the field goal kicker is 9 of 10 coming into the day. 
Watch the, net, the defensive line. See the hole open in here? Look how big that hole is. Doesn't take talent to get through it. It takes quickness to get through it. And that's what he has. Great quickness. Junior out of Carson, California. First down across the 45. Now that penalty may have really opened up some things for UCLA. They trail 21 to nothing. This time, not as successful. Arnold Mobley was there. Anthony Smith was there. There's Mobley. Tall, skinny guy. The coaches are saying he only weighs 203 pounds at six foot four. He's a football player. I watched him move on the practice field the other day. Honor student in high school coming out, coming out of Dallas, Lincoln High School. Second down, seven now for the Bruins. 8.20 left in the first half. Play action fake by Johnson. Nice throw. On target that time. A throw to Paul Richardson. Richardson is starting to become a big factor in the UCLA offense. Makes the first down catch at the 42. They're going to out of huddle. They're ready to go. A hurry up offense as soon as they get the change move. You know, Arizona was concerned all week about UCLA's quick tempo offense. And they actually practiced one day, Wednesday, without having a defensive huddle at any time on the practice field. Johnson throwing, and it's dropped. That was Richardson it's just a moment ago and caught the 10-yard play, this time not able to hang on. He is their fastest wide receiver. They say he's a gamer, not known for his work ethic on the practice field, but it's improving, but it's a real talent. So they go without a huddle again. Second down, 10, 8.02 went to the second quarter play. Johnson to throw. Up the field and broken up. Coming from behind and getting there prematurely on the play was Arizona. That is Holt. The key flying up Richard Holt. And he's going to be called for interference. Here's the isolation on the receiver. He definitely made contact a little early, it looks like. Or maybe that right hand got there, but I, I think you have to make that the call. Richard Holt, a sophomore out of Carson. Over the back, and now penalties really helping UCLA. This is the whole drive. The drive has been kept going. Coach Tommy took his hat off. They Holt. Give it to him, Nick. Give it to him. Yeah, get after him. Go ahead. Holt was running for 10 yards. I mean, he was full steam to get to the point of impact. I don't know why Brett Johnson didn't run that one. I mean, he had the whole corner to run it, and he is a fine quick runner. Inexperienced, maybe. First down, the crowd not happy with that call. The pass interference. Johnson spread out. Little dribble. And he's got rid of it. Singleton is over there. Also over there was Salem. You can see here on the spread out here, getting them outside the pocket, getting them outside the rush. The thing is, they just kept him going toward the sideline. Sideline so long, he had no place left to throw the football. It's a good defense. He had no place to set up and throw. You really get penned in on the near sideline. Plus, you constrict the area you have to attack throwing. So it comes now to a second and ten from the 30. They get the 31. Far and more can split to the near side. No back attack. Yep, that's Brown in motion. Johnson. And the catch is made by Farr. Farr has fallen down, had gotten up, and still got there to make the catch. He's about a yard short of the first down. Mike Farr, who had 66 catches last year, a school record for UCLA. And with that 66 catches, he did not catch a touchdown pass. Now, I have never heard of that with a man catching that many balls. It's a big issue with the UCLA team. He doesn't have one this year yet. He had one in his entire career. Third and a yard to go. They got it. Brown's got it. Brian Brown inside the 20 to the 19. You know, UCLA inside the 20 has been very effective when they get down there. From the 19, the Bruins. You'll see the drive going. They've been down there 18 times, scored 14, 11 touchdowns, three field goals. That's a very efficient offense inside the 20. And they have been playing you know, just weak teams when you consider it's Michigan and uh, those kind of Tennessee. Bar goes in motion. That's quick, the fullback. That's quick to the 
yard line, a pickup of four, it'll bring up second down. Zeno Alexander out of Houston Yates High School to make the tackle. Second down. Johnson to throw. In trouble and Singleton got it. Chris Singleton. He went up to throw and Singleton just dragged him back down. Moss will be third and nine. Singleton coming from the outside. He's a good pass rusher. Comes up out there. He's bang. He gets up there, gets his hands up high as the quarterback tries to go up high to throw it. He just gets his hands right up there and stuffs it back down. See number 84. That is his brother, Kevin's number. All of them are wearing it. Chris, the all Big Ten performer a year ago. Should say Pac Ten performer. Third down and nine. Rid of him to Harbuckle, but he's not getting that much on that one. Good play that time by Chris Wright, number 31. Fourth down. They had one pass protector blocking two pass rushers. <laughs> you lose that battle. As we take a look at this from the end zone, focus your attention to the right side of the screen. Now you see Geddes, number 92, breaks in there clean, right up there. That's hard to throw an accurate pass. He got it there, but not enough for the first down. Alfredo Velasco will attempt the field goal. He's six and seven, and this is going to be a 36-yard attempt. The snap was down. Maggio holds, and kick is up, and it's no good. Wide left. So after all of that, having the penalties, keeping the drive going, they don't come away with any points. He was unstoppable inside the 30, 18 of 18 prior to that. The phrase bear down is synonymous with Arizona athletic excellence. John Button Salmon was student body president and a letterman in football and baseball in 1926 when he was involved in a fatal automobile accident. His last words to coach John F. Papa Kale were, tell him to bear down. Today, Salmon's legendary words are displayed on a bronze bust located outside the university's athletic offices. And there is that slogan, bear down. It's also in the Arizona locker room, and they have been bearing down. They lead 21 to nothing. Missed opportunity by UCLA. That's a mental letdown for the squad as well, because, you know, he, is, he was 30 for 30 inside the 40-yard line. And that's outstanding. It's got to be a lot better than that. Well, when they move the sticks, let's go down to Cheryl Miller. She has a very special guest. Carrie with me is Margaret Singleton. She is the mother of Kevin and Chris Singleton, who play for U of A. And Kevin, four months ago, was diagnosed with having leukemia. He's in remission now. But what type of burden, and how are you really, you know, holding up to this? I'm doing okay. It's really very tough because it's. I feel really sad today because Kevin can't be here, and I want to say hi, and I want to tell him to not to give up because Chris and I love him, and we need him, and we know that he can beat this, so just keep fighting. Now, you were living in New Jersey. You moved down here. Was this one of the reasons? No, I came out here a year ago just to watch them play ball their last two years, the junior and senior year, and as it turned out, it was, it was, I'm really glad that I was here because of his illness, but I came out just to watch them play. Well, you can't, you can't beat the weather, and we're really happy that things are going well for Kevin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cheryl. Kevin, by the way, wanted to be here today. He's been having a little trouble with a cold and some flu, and so they just want him to rest and watch at home, and Kevin, we say hello as well. First down, I should say first and five after that last penalty, setting it up at the 36. Kill comes in motion. Elbridge. Elbridge to the 40. Very close to another first down. They are dominating the line of scrimmage right now. The defensive line has got to get some penetration, take some people on and whip them. They might start doing some stunning in that defensive line here. Greg Davis on the stop, but it's a first down. Getting back to that Velasco miss. They depend so much on him. Boy, that has to shake your confidence a little bit. It has to when you know the guy's never missed for you, and all of a sudden he misses. And then you start saying, oh, is this our bad day or what? So far, it's been a bad day for UCLA. They trail 21 to nothing. First down at the 41. The old will pitch it back. Eldridge with the ball. Another 25 in there. Good defense. Carl Gray was up there, number three. He's a true freshman out of Cincinnati. 
last year, Gary, I had the opportunity to broadcast uh, broadcast this ball game, and Arizona didn't make an inch running the option in the play. And now mixing in this other offense, now here they come with the option again. It looks like he's going to have a chance to hit that crease, but instead of taking up in the crease, he decided to come outside and ran right into his own blocker, number nine, Kip Lewis. Saw Pat closing in on him. Gain of five. Eldridge now 168 yards. That's a career high. It breaks his old standard of 166 yards last year against Eastern Michigan. Sap with the ball. He's real quick. Yes, he is. Not big, but quick. That's to the midfield strike. On quickness alone, not design, not coaching, he moved that ball into a third and short situation. Chances of making the first down much better. He should have been tackled five, six yards back there. They weren't quick enough. You mean you can't coach athletic ability? Not really. And, and Terry has been concerned all year. Coach Donnie has been concerned that their defense isn't quick enough. Zap again is very, very small. He's 5'8", 164, but is he quick? Third down in the yard. Arizona, boy, 21 to nothing lead. Sap again. Good it's job, Mike Lodish. Lodish. Yep, Mike Lodish, number 94. Brother Rice High School in Birmingham, Michigan. You know what he told me last night? He says, Coach Glenn Parker, the offensive tackle for Arizona, is a friend of mine. But he says, tomorrow I'm going to get after him. <laughs> he will. <laughs> so it's fourth down, and Nice will come in to punt the football. Farr will go back for the Bruins. Two and a half minutes left in this first half. You got to be alert when you return to punts against this team. Hits it very high. Barr calling for the fair catch at the 11 yard line. UCLA has it there. 40 yard punt. This is going to surprise some people to score thus far if you're looking around the country. 21 0 Arizona. Arizona leading, and UCLA has made a change, a change at quarterback. There he is, number seven, Jim Bonds, a sophomore. He, along with Brett Johnson, were neck and neck at spring training for the starting job. They have a lot of confidence as he comes in at this stage in Jim Bonds. He has a much stronger rifle type arm, not the scrambler type, but he has a good strong arm. Brett Johnson leads it 5 of 12 for 45 yards on his first snap. Oh, oh. Oh. That almost was six. Darrell Lewis just missed a touchdown. Wow, Darrell Lewis intercepted the ball last year against UCLA. He must have been in a rolled-up coverage. Here's the ISO on the receiver right there, Reggie Moore. He's going to catch the ball. No, he's not going to catch the ball. He went for the ball to its highest point, did everything right, but catch it. That ball was thrown so hard that Lewis just good, couldn't quite good hang point. on. Good point, Gary. He does throw a heavy, hard ball. Boy, he has an arm. It's an interesting first call for a guy to make a throw like that. They have confidence in him. Second and ten. Catch up, man. This one is picked up by Stevenson. So, Bonds, a near miss, and then the interception. And nothing is going right for Terry Donahue's team. There's a crossing pattern, straight drop back. You can see in the middle of the screen, he's sitting back there in the pocket. You'll see the receiver moving off the screen to your right. Defender right there did a real nice job singling, uh, just covering a man-to-man -man once he got over in his zone. Oh, my gosh, what a turnover. Well, his yes. mother's got to be proud of him right now. As well as brother. Kevin, who's watching from a hospital bed. and Boy, that's exciting for that family. Oh, Tommy's in the full wishbone. Yeah. First and goal now from the eight-yard line. Field keeps the football, cuts it up, touchdown, Arizona. So Ron Field done a great job of faking it at the middle, and he takes it in from seven yards out. Super play. 27 to nothing. Hurry 
busy as the point after. 28 to nothing with 1.53 left in this first half. Singleton set it up with the interception and the Wildcats are on a roll. Arizona with Singleton picking off the pass. Field scoring from seven yards out and don't adjust your set. It is 28 to nothing. 28 to nothing. And we still have 153 left in the first half. Nice will kick off for the Wildcats, and this one will be a return of it. It's going to be Ryan Brown. All through at the 17. Here's what's, here's what's set up the last scoring play, the interception by Singleton. Good drop back pass. Not a lot of pressure on him. A lot of time, almost too much time. Flows across there. Nice shot by single right here. His first interception in his career. He's made over 245 tackles. That's the first time he's intercepted. Here's what it leads to. The option. Fake the fullback inside. Come off. Fake the pitch out there. See him flip that there. Everybody took the bait. He looks cool today. Doesn't he? Boy, does he ever. Now, what do you do if you're UCLA? Bonds has already suffered an interception. Just keep throwing, I guess. Try to get back in this one. Don't have much choice. From the 16-yard line, first down. Bonds, this time on a delayed handoff. It's Kevin Williams, their fastest running back, and he's out to the 30. First down, but a penalty fly. This Kevin Williams is something special. Yes, he is out of Spring, Texas. Senior in high school, he's considered to be the best high school running back in the country. Holding will bring it back. You know, they're, uh, UCLA is sort of getting handed to it right here in this first half, but they, uh, at any time, have they shown a real spark? Uh, like, uh, you know, do they look quite mentally ready to get after it today? Oh, I don't know. Think the heat's a factor? I don't know. It's going to get hotter and hotter if you trail by this. Coming up at halftime, the Prudential College scoreboard. We'll be joining Roger Twible with scores, highlights, a preview of tonight's Game 1 of the 89 World Series, an update on the Trans-Antarctic Expedition. Right now, it's a little colder there than it is here. Hot today, and it's getting hotter if you're a Bruin player or a fan. Arizona with a 28 to nothing lead. The thing is now, Arizona's playing a nickel defense with five defensive backs. A little tough to throw for Fox. against that type of Draw again. This time, it's Williams stopped at the 15-yard line. They're still about 11 yards short of the first down. Darren Case is over there. He's out of Tempe, McClintock High School. Also, Ty Parton. Parton, they moved to the defense after playing offense in the Oregon game. Timeout now, Arizona. They have one left. So, Jim Bonds will come to the near side. Out of Valencia High School. Valencia, rather, Hart High School in Valencia. Well, they told us he could start on a lot of football teams. They felt they were in very good hands when they would put him in. Well, they didn't want to put him in under these circumstances. <laughs> that wasn't what they had in mind. Second down and 11. Bonds will give off to Kevin Williams. Yeah, look at this guy. Out to the 30. Oh, is he smooth? Brings the ball out to the 35. Richard Holt caught up with it. He's not only smooth, Gary, he has 10, 400 meter time. Now that is flying. I mean, that's just flying. What the Pac-10 was uh, 100 meter dashes last year is Iceland play. Hand it off deep. He bounces to the outside. Now look at that speed. He gets up there. He's right up in the secondary right now. Wow. 20 yard game to the 35. First down for the Bruins. 55 seconds left to the first half. Play action fake. Boy, look at this throw. Up the field. He's at the end zone. Hammersmith. Jim Hammersmith. The ball was thrown so hard, no one could hang on, and Hammersmith took the deflection. He sees a play action pass deep in the eye formation. He's faking the pass to freeze the linebackers to work people in behind the linebackers. He gets it by him, but he throws the ball high. It's over the top. It's batted then on into the deep safety right there. Hammerschmidt making the secondary. That's the second interception of his career. He's taking another look at it. You'll see that the action does freeze the linebackers. It's easy to get it behind him now. They're looking. Here comes the throw. It's pushed up in the air. Deflected. Interception. Hammerschmidt. 
Paul Richardson was the intended target, and Hammersmith, who at one time was a quarterback in Arizona, with the interception. Bonds is going for three and two interceptions. Here's Neal. And he just got rid of that one. Hammersmith, they call him the hammer. He'll really unload on you. When he was an emergency quarterback for Arizona, he went 71 yards on a keeper against California. <laughs> he has that look about it. You interviewed him yesterday. He looks like a defensive player. He's got that defensive yeah. look. He got the Bronco Nagurski Award one year for playing both ways. He played offense and defense. They give a helmet without a face mask. That's the trophy. Second and ten. Bill with a lot of time, and Kip blows us down. That'll bring up third and ten. That was Matt Darby commenting, or on the far side, defending on the play. Darby didn't know if he would play today. He's had a pinched nerve in his neck. Missed last week's game. Boy, is he a good football player. Last year in this ball game against Arizona and Wishmore, he was a dominating player in the game. Had ten tackles. Third and ten. 33 seconds. Well, if you're Terry Donahue, Nick, what are you going to do at halftime? <laughs> Start chewing. And not bubble gum, I'll tell you that. <laughs> wow. Chewing on rear ends, you know. I guess. Well, tempo hasn't been what you need. Neil again to throw. He's got all kinds of time and connects. That's Kyle Jan rolling up with a catch. A yard short it. of the first down. He'll go for it. Clock running, 20 seconds. They have one timeout left. Hey, Arizona gone. does. And now they're going to use it. So Arizona now has used all three of their timeouts. 14 seconds left. And everything that Dick Tommy has been calling has been working today. <laughs> well, Nice is going to punt on fourth down. This has been a long first half for UCLA. Now Mike Barr will go back. Now UCLA wants a timeout. Maybe they don't think they're going to punt. <laughs> Dick always creates an error of concern with your decision making. Believe me. These cats, well, these kids in Arizona have got pink glasses. Ruben Morales, they're a few white years or miles away from the beach, but. Uh, he doesn't even have shoulder pads on. Look at him. He's big as a house. <laughs> like to pause now five seconds to allow our ABC stations to identify themselves. So it looks as though Nice will punt. So with Dick Tomey, you never know. 14 seconds left. You notice UCLA is in regular defense. They're not in a punt return defense. They call this safe return. And nice gets it away. Oh. It's a beautiful punt. That one is going to land in Phoenix, all the way into the end zone seats. Why don't punters get punts like that when they kick out of their own end zone, rather than kicking it all the way over into somebody else's end zone? Well, he just missed club, though, that one. <laughs> it's good. At the 20, that one goes at 51-yard punt. So with five seconds left, UCLA will come in and end what has been a torrid, terribly disappointing first half for this guy. I don't know if Terry's ever been confronted with this kind of thing. 28 to nothing. Last time they lost here was 27-24 and a game down to the very end where John Lee leads a field goal. Yeah. That's the last time Arizona beat New Zealand. The Bronx will give off to Williams, and Williams is getting some hard to jump this one. It's something to think about in the second half. He brings it out to the 43, and that will bring it to a close. 28-0 in favor of Arizona. Well, we turn with more college football action between UCLA and the University of Arizona after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Brand new press box here at Arizona Stadium and a crowd of better than 50,000. It's warm. It's been a record summer and as far as that goes, fall temperature-wise. And Arizona's made it a lot hotter for UCLA as they have marched to a 28 to nothing halftime lead. Dick Vermeil, my question is, do you come back with Brett Johnson now or do you continue with Jim Bonds? Well, I think Terry Donahue. Well, Brett Johnson's 
been the quarterback, uh, you know, given the position as a starting, I would come back with him. I'd come back and say, hey, we didn't do anything in the first half, offensively or defensively. Let's squad start a whole new ball game. And do it with the people that you thought were the best players before they got here. Aces will kick off for the Wildcats. Brown goes back along with Kevin Williams. If there was one bright spot for UCLA, it was Kevin Williams running the ball late in the first half. Yeah, and it was almost against a prevent type defense, but there's no question he has some talent. Ace kicks off, and Ryan Brown is going into the end zone and drops it. Well, down it there, and it's a 20 yard line. UCLA will set it up, so let's see who's coming in at quarterback. Ryan Brown picks off in the end zone. Nick, something you wanted to point out to the fans is this crap. Well, you know, you, you tend to think on a hot day that players are out there playing 15-minute quarters, 30-minute and a half, but actual playing time from the snap to the whistle, UCLA has played 2 minutes and 59 seconds, Arizona 3 minutes and 47 seconds. You're not, you know, you're throwing a series of 5-second wars. That's what it amounts to. And I mean wars. You ought to emphasize the word wars. It's Brett Johnson back. Yep, it is Brett Johnson, the quarterback from the 20-yard line, and he's got a play-action rollout. In trouble being chased by Anthony Smith. And it lifts his way for a very fine six-yard game. Great defense by Arizona. They wanted to throw back to Charles Ar Arbuckle, the tight end on a crossing pattern. They couldn't do it. He wanted to throw back. He couldn't do it. The guy was coming like a blanket. You'll see Arbuckle at the top right. He'll be coming across. Here he is on the rollout. Defense have everybody covered. No one to throw to. Therefore, here comes the rush. And the rush is a good, quick rush. Shows you, though, the ability of Johnson to really get over around. Eight of six. Giving off. Oh, hello. That is Kevin Williams, the freshman, and this time, nothing. Anthony Smith. He's, he is the leader of the defense, Anthony uh, Smith is. Number 94. A big guy, 6'5, 248. An NFL prospect. A pro scout's in there. And you're looking at tapes, 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 tapes uh, looking at him, evaluating him as a player. His parents died in an accident at the age of three, so he's been a guy from Elizabeth City, North Carolina, that's really fought his way uphill. Third down now, and still four yards to go. A lot of time, and still can't find anybody. The coverage is that good. Johnson trying to hit Charles Arbuckle, and Chris Singleton was absolutely on top of him. It's almost as if Arizona's defense is in UCLA's offensive level. They're covering those patterns like a blanket. It was a flooded pattern getting three people over to the short side of the field, and there was just no place for the kid to throw the ball. Agio will go back and punt to Darrell Lewis. Well, if you're a UCLA fan and you're looking for some bright spot, Arizona led UCLA back in 86 when they played in the Rose Bowl, 18 to nothing. Well, you see the Bruins come back. This is 28 to nothing. Big rush. They almost got it. Well, they're going to get better. No, no penalty. Off it comes to Lewis, and he's to the 41. They had three blue shirts on top of Maggio. Maggio pleading for the call. He's not going to get it. 38-yard punt, five-yard return. The Wildcats, 28 to nothing, and they have the football. Terry Donahue, 45, but aging fast. Nick Tomey, 51, on the right of the screen. Getting younger. Yes, he is. Donahue is 14 years. This is maybe one of the longer afternoons he's experienced in UCLA. Give to Mario Hampton, the fullback, and Hampton about four yards to the 45-yard line. That is Rashid, the linebacker credited with the tackle. I like how he plays football. Watching the teams against Arizona State, he's a real solid, good football player. He was injured in 1986. He had a red shirt. Boy, he's going to come back healthy. They lost three outstanding linebackers from last year's team that went 10-2. Second down, a long five on the option field. Got to keep it very close to the first down. Mike Lodish is over there, along with Keith Nickham. I think somewhere here, the defensive coaches have got to say, hey, let's not play our basic scheme 80% of the time. Let's play the basic scheme 50% of the time. Let's start coming some dogs and blitzes and get after his game minus yardage play. Well, they're going to measure, see if they got the first down. This gives us an opportunity to get a perspective on this game. We talked to Dick Tomey and asked him to kind of put a label on this game for us. Well, I think, you know, the, the, uh, the bullets of the back 10 have been uh, SC and UCLA for 
time immemorial. You know, and I think Arizona's, uh, uh, the record says we're the third team in the Pac-10 the last five years. We were third in the league last year, tied with Washington State, beat Washington State. Um, we have an opportunity again this year to be up in the conference standings if we can win some of these key ball games. And so if we're going to go to the next level, we have to beat the Los Angeles. And, uh, this is our first opportunity. And so we and they made a very bold step to go to the next level. It was the first down on the measurement, and the handoff to McGill gets another five, and Marcus Patton made the stop. I think the other thing, too, coming into this football game, the University of Arizona was really excited about playing UCLA. I don't sense in watching UCLA play that they're really excited about playing Arizona, especially right now, 29, you know, 28. Well, you know, Dick, I tell you, Terry had talked about he wasn't sure what kind of football team he's had. He was kind of wavering a little bit before that Michigan game. He was concerned about the personality of the squad. Second down now, five yards to go. And to the fullback. And he's still on his feet. And finally they blow the whistle. Argo was over there to make the stop. That's a strange play. Hampton's a big kid, 220 pounds. There's Argo. He had a 48-yard interception last week against Arizona State for a touchdown. 3.5 grade point average in high school. Really? It's nice to coach those kids. Wait, well, you, you were what, there. You were what, 3.9, something like that? On a seven-point scale. <laughs> <laughs> My most important class to me was Techniques of Teaching Football by Bob Bronson. <laughs> in San Jose State. Well, you made a nice look. Third down now, less than a yard. On to the ball. Ball's going to get up the first down as Hampton straight ahead. Ryan Kelly made the stop along with Brad Bryson. Well, not only is Arizona winning this football game, Dick, but they are building something. Now, you got to think about this new offense. They went to Colorado. Bill McCartney spent some time with him. This, that was just this past week. The yep. week before last week, their bye week. Just to study how Colorado had broken the bone offense and used the eye and utilized it and everything else, it has definitely made a contribution here. The other thing is, some of the guys I've seen walking around here, red shirt, I saw a 330 pound tackle big enough to eat a day. I'd like to have his grocery bill. Oh, First down now from the 39 of UCLA, 10.47 left in the third quarter. Bill pulls it down. He's taken off. Why go play? As he is tackled at the 33, Marcus Patton over there. Neil likes to run, and hey, when you're leading 28 to nothing, you don't need to take any chances. There's a hanky on the field down there. Hanky at the 41. Holding against Arizona. Again, Arizona had only 18 total penalties coming into this game for the whole year. Here he is. It's a straight drop back pass. He's sitting out there. He fades a little bit to the right. He has time. He has time. Now he's flushed. Lodi's flushed him to the outside. Now, see, he really doesn't want to throw the ball. But he wants to run the football. The young man standing to the right, that's Dick Tomey's son, who's also an outstanding baseball player. It's a Gary Junior College. Yeah, Pima College. Pima College. He Rich is his name, and uh, boy, has he grown up since the last time I saw him. I saw him. Yeah, oh. no, over in Hawaii is the last I had uh, seen him. So. First down now, and a long ways to go. Hand off this time to Hampton, and Hampton moves. Tough to get out. 45 yard line. Still about 17 yards short of the first down. Argo was the one that dragged him down. You can see his strength. He bench presses 400 pounds, runs the 40 and 4-5. High school honor roll student. You know what his hobby is? Cooking. <laughs> well, you're that big, you got to be able to cook, right? You've got to do something like that. Nick, you put this game in perspective. Arizona won back-to-back -back Oklahoma, Washington. And boy, this has got to go up there as one of the big wins for well, Tomek. And they were terribly disappointed in their performance against Oregon, not taking any more of Oregon, but they felt they were the better team. Stridemick is in there at a fullback spot. Back to throw as Leo pulls it down, takes off. And now throwing down the far side, just got rid of it. Ogun Fedidemi was the intended receiver. Nice job, Ogun Fedidemi. You mean on the uh, name or on, the on play? On the name, on the name. He was a transfer from Michigan, played for Bo Schimbeck, but he walked on there. Yeah, walked on here. He's out of Washington, D.C. His father is somewhere in Nigeria. His mother works in the Washington, D.C. area. Honor student. 
won the Golden Eagle Academic Award here last year in 1988 for the outstanding student on the team. Third down now, long ways to go. Third and 16. Gary, he came here without a scholarship and earned one at the end of the 88 season. Double O is split out along with Lewis. This is the fullback. Striding. Striding. Striding is a walk-on out of Austin, Texas. They tell me that he is absolutely as hard-nosed as any player they've got. He's been a great special teams player. Look, he looks hard-nosed. What's this beard thing? You know, these guys have beards. Well, you got to keep warm down here in Arizona. <laughs> supposed to make you look mean. He looks mean. Knees now to punt. I-13, still 28 to nothing in favor of the Wildcats. That was the margin at halftime. Bar will go back for UCLA. Snap to the side, but needs is equal to him. Too far. Yes, he did. That's going to make it into the end zone. And at the 20-yard line, a 39-yard punt. UCLA will have it. Well, the Bruins need to have something going. The only chance they had was a field goal. They missed that. They're down by 28. crowd here in the great southwest arizona stadium crowd of better than 50,000. parents day here right now ucla trying to put the pieces together they start from the 20 yard line johnson pitching back to kevin williams williams for five to the 25. marcel wade over there to make the stop now here is a player of the future they really like this guy he's out of oakland 6'2 229 very heavily recruited High school honor roll, honor roll student. Got a number of these bright guys. He's a drummer. He likes to play the drums. That's how he gets himself in the movie. Second round and high from the 25. Scott Miller and Reggie Morris put out. 27 left to the third. Williams again. And Williams fighting for that first down. I believe he's got it. Good second effort by Kevin Williams. See, he just cut that back on his own. He didn't like what he saw outside, so he just took it back up inside. Reggie Johnson will be credited with the stop. First down, UCLA. Williams has carried the ball now seven times for 64 yards. We mentioned he won the 100 meters of the Pac-10 track championships. Donnie has said that Williams in just recent weeks has started the show. He's gaining understanding of the confidence that he belongs playing in you know, the Pac-10, playing in UCLA, and being the player that he's going to look toward to be. Just started the show. It took him a while to get used to double days, too. Two practices a day. Took him a while. That was Zeno Alexander going off the field and made the stop on that last play. Second down now. Eight yards to go. Four and Miller again split out. Our side is okay. it the catch? No, it's no. not. Reggie Moore is out of bounds. Richard Holt, number 37, defending on the play. Boy, they slipped that one. He threw the ball a little bit high anyway, but the defender was there. Here he goes, going to roll it out there. Corner rolls up in front. Safety coming over here. He goes up there. Yeah, that's a catchable ball. you got to catch that football. Hope he gets a trainer. Got a man shaking up for Arizona. We'll try to figure that out as soon as possible. And it looks like Anthony Smith. That's who it is. So Smith is down, and we're going to go away for a moment. 7.29 now left in this third quarter. 28 to nothing. Arizona. Anthony Smith helped off the field just a moment ago. The defensive end. We'll take a look in a moment as to how he got hurt. Ty Parton has come in to replace him. The redshirt freshman out of Scottsdale. Third down. Third and eight. Johnson, near side. Moore got him. He stays in bounds. No, he went out of bounds. He's out of bounds at the 41, but it's a first down catch. It was number four against number four. Reggie Miller against Darrell Lewis. 26 yard gain. Threw the ball right where he had to throw the ball. Up high, gave the receiver the chance to go up for the ball. The defender can't see that ball in that situation many times, Gary. See, and he sets up nicely. Now he throws it up high on the outside. Now the receiver right down there at the bottom of your screen. 
Here's where you see the ball way up there. He gets up there outside like that. Good job. Tough on the defender. Reggie Moore last year at 38 catches. He was a sophomore All-American. 26 yard gain. Here's Kevin Williams. And the ball roll. The ball is a So for a moment, it looked like UCLA was putting the pieces together, but the turnover looked like Chris Singleton coming up with a fumble recovery. Marcel Wade, the guy that hit the guy Williams to separate the ball. The deep handoff, so he has plenty of time to tuck it away and get her. He's carrying his left arm. He gets his pads down here and gets high. Hit right now. They stripped it out on the way down to the ground. Marcel Wade, number 44, stripped and loose. Williams, they said, they thought he was ready to play. They were excited about him. And that fumble, just going to have to grow a little bit with that. The redshirt freshman. First down now to 35. Him to the fullback. Couple of yards on the play. Ryan Kelly there on the stop. So Singleton with an interception, Hammerschmidt with an interception, and now a fumble. Three turnovers against UCLA. That continues to be worth 12 points. Turnovers. Fumble is worth two and a half points. But uh, buddy, but Goody Computer tells me he had an interception of worth about four and a half points. Puts it in proper perspective. <laughs> Eight yards to go. That's a carry for a while, but here he goes. To the 45, first down. Eric Turner made the stop. 18-yard game. Really a super job of blocking by the offensive right guard, right to the left of the goalpost, number 63. See, he gets a nice turnout block, opens up the hole there. Tolfemeyer does a nice job up in there. Good blocking at the point of attack. Eldridge now, 186 yards rushing. Boy, he's found a new career in this offense. <laughs> if he goes into a chalk talk on Monday and they talk about the wishbone, he's going to walk out. What a performance. He's carried 18 times. There he goes again. I like the way he just takes it in. He's aggressive with the ball. He was a big kid, too, at 212 pounds. Argo, Turner on the stop. Pick up a nine yards on the play, second and one. You know he's getting the picture of everything going on because he is a photography major. <laughs> you were playing that one all day long. <laughs> Dennis today, 51,562. And a happy Arizona crowd. I'm sure a surprised Arizona crowd. 28 to nothing, Arizona. Five and a half left in the third quarter. Scrambling around. He's got some running room. 30, 25, 20. It's a big block. Big block to the 15. Oh! Yeah, at the board. Nice hit. Eric Turner made the stop. Oh, did he get some help on that run? Yeah, but he got hit at the end of it. Eric Turner really put the pads to him. That's a 24 yard scramble by Ron Beal. A la Randall Cunningham, Philadelphia Eagles. Why throw it when you can run further? He just takes off real grace with the young man. He's smooth, gets around there. Look at him. He's picking up. Now watch him pick up the block right there. That's Elridge down here. Coming the block. Now watch that hit. Wow. He nice block, Turner. Patton. That was Patton. That was knocked out of there. 24 yard gain. First down. 12 and a half. Pitch comes back to Elridge. Running run to the five. He's to the three. Boy. Rip Shear, the offensive coordinator and quarterback coach, Ron McBride, who is 50 years old today, the offensive line coach, Sam Papali, the running back coach, and Mark Lunsford, the receiver coach, all coaching this Arizona offense. Got it, man. Please. Please. What a birthday present for a 50-year-old offensive line coach from San Jose State. Wow. First and goal now at the two-yard line. Eldridge continues to mount numbers now 210 yards from the day. Seventh last year against UCLA. And is this a mishandle? No, they do that. I watched them on the practice field. Quick count, nobody moved, just the center and the quarterback. So the defensive linemen then don't respond. That's interesting. Field to the one. If it's all legal, there's no flags. No one moved but Field and Toffelmeyer. Huh. Can you 
You better be ready for Dick Tomey's team. I watched him do this in the practice field, and I thought they were offside just like you did. But watch fans, nobody will move, just those guys. See, they don't let the other linemen move on this until late, so the defensive people don't move unless they're looking at the ball. Second and goal at the one. Right on this ball, and making it straight over. Leo keeping, and he is in for the touchdown. Arizona. 
There's a draw handoff to Williams and didn't fool anybody. Maybe a yard. Here is Brett Johnson throwing to Reggie Moore. Intercepted by Hammersmith. Oh, what an interception. Woo! It's second of the game. That looked like a completion, and all of a sudden, here comes number 15. One, uh, one official down there started to call it a completion. He didn't see the uh, safety coming down. Now watch this. Here he comes, number 15. He reaches out there and pulls it in. Last week, he got the first interception in his senior career. Now he gets two today. Taking a look. 15 at the bottom of your screen. See him. He's watching the quarterback's eyes. He moves off to the left. He's going for it. Here he is. He oh. covered a lot of ground. Great response. Good quickness. Boy, they got to grade him on the dive there. Yeah. We got a change at quarterback now. George Malaulu is coming in at quarterback. He is a freshman red shirt out of Carson, the left hander, and he gives up to Michael Bates. And Bates gets a couple of yards on the play. There he is, Malaulu. They really like this guy. In fact, there was a lot of support to maybe have him be the quarterback if he'll experience some more difficulty. He will be the quarterback. As he matures and gains understanding, I visited with him on the field the other day. He says the understanding is really starting to come. He felt he was going to be ready to play some today. And if it was a different kind of ball game and they had to throw the ball more, I think George would have been in the ball game. Gain of about two yards on the play. And Malahulu gives off to Strykning. That's Mike Strykning. And uh, he's across the 10 just barely. You know, the other thing about George is he's ambidextrous. Yes, he, he is. He can throw both right or left-handed. Now, he's only working on the right hand, but I understand... Uh, I mean, working left-handed, but I understand he plays second base right-handed. Pitches right-handed. That's quite a... That would really help you on the option, wouldn't it? Well, yeah, you would think it would. Plus, how about rolling out? Right now, he's getting some valuable playing time with 56 seconds left here in the third quarter. The kill goes in motion. Lulu giving off this time to set. He's going to win. Living a yard short of the first down with the 15. The thing about Sapp, there reminds a lot of people of David Adams, who played here at Arizona, wore the same number, number two. I think Sapp is about the same height, probably not as heavy as Adams. There he is. If, they, if he is 164, that's soaking wet. I, I walked by him on the field the other day, but he was the Los Angeles City Player of the Year in 1988. He's quite an athlete. So they run out of downs, and Nice will punt to this guy, far. 35 to nothing. Did you say he was going to punt it far? He's done it far thus far. I'm sorry. Kenny McPeters is going to snap the ball. That was pretty good. Here is the punt. And oh, what a beauty. Woo. And Mike Farr is going to just get it out of bounds. I think. So at the 25 yard line. That is an outstanding punt by Nice. We'll be back. We'll return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Arizona Stadium, Terry Donahue on the left, Dick Tomey on the right. And the guy on the right is really having a big day as Arizona leads 35 to nothing. Terry's probably wondering if they added an extra quarter to this game. <laughs> 15 minutes left to go as we start the fourth quarter. UCLA has it first down to 25. Out to the 30-yard line, a gain of about five is Sean Wills. Bruins in the 80s went trailing after the third quarter. Seven wins, three losses. Today, that's a uh, 35 points to make up to break even. Boy, if you're Terry, you got to think about just having some success to build for next weekend. And, of course, again, they the danger of having the NCAA record streak of 210 straight games scoring a point snapped. Johnson throwing and complete to far. Makes a nice move. Complete to number nine. Next to the 46. Alexander and Salem on the stop. Hammersmith also over there. Look at the total yards here for Arizona. 300. And 63 yards, third quarter statistics, UCLA 97. Wow. Look at the turnovers, too. Yeah. 
Four interceptions and a fumble. Well, you know, Arizona came in here plus seven turnovers. They've taken it away seven more times. That's uh, and they've given it up. First down at the 46 of Arizona after that completion. On 25. On Wills. Wills starting his second game today and had not seen a lot of action since early. Salem and Case combining on the tackle. Wanted to mix it up, get some ball control going, and uh, I'll tell you what, none of that's happening. They didn't mix it up, they huffed it up. Yeah. Four times they've turned it over. At the 39, second down. Three yards going on this one. Wills again. First down. I really like this Wills. I watched him play last year. He can make you miss. He can make the cutback run. He has, he's an enthusiastic, intense kid. I think he's uh, really a, a leader. He played in the California Shrine game. A lot of these players have played in the Shrine game. Randy Austin played in the Shrine game. Cole and Anthony played in the Shrine game. And, and that's a really a great honor to play in the California State Shrine game. He set a record last year for UCLA freshman running backs, gaining 622 yards. First down for the 34. Brett Johnson dumps it off to Wills. Up to the 30. 28 yard line. Geyer over there in case. UCLA's worst defeat for Coach Donahue was against Nebraska in 1984. It was 42-3. to 42-3, to and that was such a big win last year when UCLA beat Nebraska. Right. Well, they came, came in here to play this game last year, the number one team in the country. Try UCLA did. Boy, the Pac-10 has changed. When I was in it, you only had about four teams that could compete. Mike White and Cal, of course, was very good at USC, University of Washington, and then the other teams weren't as competitive. Here comes Wills. See that move? Yes, sir. That's a first down run to the 16 yard line. So Arizona's got a tough trip to go to Washington State oh, yeah, next week. Can, there's no breathers. You could play one great game and then go for three weeks playing people that couldn't beat you unless you as a coach held it up. Not anymore in the past 10. You have to play every week and you have to be good. CLA trying to get on the scoreboard. Johnson. To the goal, it's a big shot. It's Lewis. Darrell Lewis sets a fifth turnover. And we have a penalty play thrown way over at the 30 yard line. Singleton was tangled up with John Wills and pushing and shoving going on. We're going to have an unsportsmanlike call against somebody. Boy, Singleton is really hot about it. He took his helmet and flung it to the far side. That's not going to have any effect on the interception. No, it won't, and it's a personal foul against UCLA. From what I can see, they were kind of stomping on him over there. Here it is. It was a nice post pattern, a well-thrown ball. You're going to see the interception to the right side of your screen. Now, Daryl Lewis comes right in underneath, right there, played it perfect, and as the secondary coaches have told us here, and as Larry McDuff told us, he is our best pure corner. Now, Daryl Lewis was a running back, played running back for a year, a uh, year and actually ran the ball, did a good job. Four interceptions by Arizona. Sets it up now at the UMA 26 yard line. 35 to nothing, the Wildcats. So Darrell Lewis with a big move in the goal line area, picking off Johnson's second pass of the afternoon. He threw that with authority. He didn't like this now. He knows he's got to make the tackle and look at it. He's a young man. He won't throw many of those in his career as he matures. He has seven for the year, two today. Bonds also has striking the fullback carries for a couple of yards. Second down and eight. UCLA still in danger of having that string snap. Here's what's happened. Three plays punted, seven and a fumble, interception, interception. <laughs> wow. I, I, I would say when this is over, Coach Donahue is going to make the statement that he's never had a team play so heavily. Well, he was feeling that way, I think, a little bit about Tennessee, too. Remember, we had a Tennessee that was proved everybody to be one of the best teams in the country, too. That's true, but I think at that time he wondered. Now he's wondering again. Here's Sam. Sam. Out to the 45, first down. And there is some of the uh, ways he might that dehydration problem. All those cups. 
It's hot. And I tell you, if you're UCLA, it's a lot hotter. You know, they block that play as you block it with chalk on the blackboard. They just blocked it just as you draw it. Here it is. Here's the tail of the play going out of bounds, going right over there, and there goes the, the cold drinks. Oh, oh, crummy. <laughs> I take that out of the scholarship. On the two minutes to sound. Oh, face mask. Oh, he got closed line, didn't he? They didn't call it. Pat was over there. I don't know if they got the face mask or just hit him around the helmet. But Sap, along with Face, some of these freshmen they recruited, they're going to have some outstanding skill people. You know what they're doing real well with the options, making a great fake inside. They're going to freeze the linebackers, everybody inside. Now they can, there's no one out there inside out pursuit. There's Marcus. Pat, number 49, and he was a step late. Patrick Bates was over there as well. He was the guy, I think, that caught him around the shoulder pads. Freshman out of Dallas from Texas. Eight, nine yards, second down a yard to go. And getting the first down of striking, he's to the 40. Bates on the stop. It's as though everything Arizona wants to run, they can do right now. Well, you know, defense is more than physical. Defense is emotion. Defense is intensity flying around the field. And UCLA has not had that today. They came in here a team that had forced a team to run 35 plays for a touchdown. They haven't done that today. Well, they were able to beat Arizona State at home last week, but their second game against the team from the state has certainly turned the other way up. Ten minutes left in the game. 35 to nothing, Arizona with the lead. Malalulu pitching back to sack. See, you know, the other thing that happens, you say UCLA, you say Coach Donahue, and you automatically assume 10, 11 wins, 12 wins. Nothing like that happens automatically. And there are going to be times from year to year that you're not quite as good as you were when you won 10 football games and won seven bowl games in a row. You, people take you for granted and just assume you're always going to be that good. Well, here's the winningest coach in the history of the Pac-10, and right now getting hammered. One of the best. Well, I'd say he's a heck of a football game. One of the best I've ever been on the field with. He's had three, ten, victory seasons, seven, nine, victory. Oh, here it is. Six points. The left-hander, wide open. And he can't quite get to it. Oh, got Fidetomy and Eric Turner with a good defensive back. I like that Eric Turner. I think he's a, a real football player. I'm sure that's not a surprise, but I only got to do one of the games last year. But he's he's always around the football. There it is. They had a play action pass. He's playing the same.